Okay, so our first topic in this design of steel structures is plastic analysis. So before going into this plastic analysis, let me remind the stress strain curve. So what we have discussed in strength of materials. Okay, so what we have studied are discussed in the beginning of strength of materials. Let us discuss that uh, stress strain curve and after that we'll go for plastic analysis. <music> understand these design of steel structures so whatever the topic in the design of steel structures whether it may be a plastic analysis or some other topic connections or whatever it may be so to understand those topics first we should be very clear about strength of materials or first we should have the proper <coughs> knowledge about the strength of materials so if we have the proper knowledge of the strength of materials then for sure you will enjoy studying these steel structures or it is a one of the interesting subject so provided you should be very clear with the strength of materials so now let us start the discussion of the stress strain curve what we have discussed in the beginning of strength of materials so if we observe the stress strain curve so if you observe the stress strain curve of mild steel so how the stress strain curve of mild steel so on x axis we are going to take strain we represent it with epsilon. On y axis, we are going to take stress. We represent it with small f or sigma, whatever it may be. So that is a notation. So if you observe this graph, so this is how the graph is going to be. Okay, this is how the graph. So, if you mark some points in this graph, which are very important. So, this is A, this is B, this is C dash, this is C and this is D, this is E and this is F. So, these are the points on this graph. So, if you observe each and every point in this graph, so there are some points here. So what are those points? A, B, C dash, C, D, E and F. So, so there are there are some points in this graph. So I guess uh, most of uh, uh, most of you will discuss. Uh, most of you has discussed it in strength of metals. But I will repeat again. So point A. So point A is proportional point, and point B is elastic point. C dash is upper yield point. C is lower yield point, and this total zone C D is called as plastic zone or yield plateau or permanent set or a permanent set and then E. E is ultimate point and D is strain hardening zone and F is necking point or failure point or fracture point whatever it may be. So F is necking point or failure point or fracture point and EF is strain softening zone. So this is about the stress strain curve of my steel. Clear? And coming to the proportional limit. So what is meant by proportional limit? So up to this point, so up to this point, this material that is mild steel obeys Hooke's law. That is the important of this point A. So point A is a proportional point. So up to this point, the Hooke's law is valid. It means this material mild steel obeys Hooke's <coughs> law. It means stress is proportional to strain. That law is valid up to this point. Now coming to this point B. So point B is <coughs> Elastic point. So what is meant by elastic point? So if the because of the external apply load So we know that because of the application of load on any member or any material So it will start elongating that means it will produce the strain. So based on that the stress will induce in it clear <coughs> Now because of that loading so this is about this is the behavior of this Material so because of the loading this is the behavior of this material and it has reached to the level of stress at point A. So which is up to this point, Hooke's law is valid. So beyond this point, if we apply more load, so stress will increase. So once the stress is above this point A, then Hooke's law is not valid. Clear, it means stress is not proportional to strain. So up to this point B, it behaves as elastic material. Now what is my elastic material? Upon removing the externally applied load, if the material regains to its initial position, that is known as elasticity. It means the material behaves as elastic material up to this point B. But once the stress 
induced in the material is beyond this point a it will not obey hooks law but it will behave like elastic material so that behavior is continued up to this point b so now we have increased load furtherly so now if we increase the load furtherly so because of that load the stress induced is beyond b it means more than b then it will not behave like elastic material okay it will not behave like elastic material so it means at point a means after the point a it starts disobeying hooks law after point b may after point b it starts or it will not start behaving like so it will not behaves like a elastic material so we are keep on loading it at stress is induced in it so stress also keep on induced in it so now it will reach to a one point where suddenly there is a drop in stress so this the point where the drop of stress takes place is known as upper yield point and where the stabilize where the graph stabilizes is known as lower yield point so now what is difference between upper yield point and lower yield point and which is considered as a true yield point so i guess everyone will know it so the true yield point is lower yield point so lower yield point or point c is considered as a true yield point and we represent the yield stress with f y f sub x y this is true yield point then what about this point so that is upper yield point so now what happened at this point because of the application of load the stress keep on increasing so at this point the carbon molecule starts slipping okay carbon molecule slips so because of that strength decreases and here it settles at point c so and one more thing we observe upper yield point if and only if there is a gradual loading it means if we are applying the load gradually then only the upper yield point can be observed or else we are not going to observe upper yield point see if the loading is sudden if loading is sudden then from here the curve reaches to here like this so there is no upper yield point so upper yield point the zone can be eliminated completely okay the zone can be eliminated completely so that is a point so when we are going to observe this we are going to observe upper yield point if and only if the gradual loading is ensured or we apply the loading gradually then only upper yield point can be absorb so now what happened at the upper yield point the slippage of carbon molecules takes place because of that the strength decreases so that is a point c so true yield point after that cd so cd is if we if we observe this total zone this is known as plastic zone plastic zone or you can say this is as a yield plateau yield plateau so what happens at this zone see if you observe the stress is continuous sorry stress is constant sorry stress is constant and strain is continuous so at a constant stress the strain is continuing so it means the permanent set has taken or permanent set has started in the material so because of that upon removing the external load also the material will not regain to its initial position so that is what plastic state means So at the beginning of C, or at the at point C, the material starts yielding. Our material entering into the plastic zone. Our permanent set has <coughs> begin in the material. Clear. So it means, as I said, upon removing the external load, the material will not regain to its initial position. So at the end of the seal plate, the plastic zone, there is a point D. So at point D, if you observe again, upon increasing the strain, the stress again increases. So this D zone is called as strain hardening zones it means the material having having the harder or material having hardness after d so that is why it is known as strain hardening zone it means upon increasing the strain the stress is also increasing so this is why that is why this is called as strain hardening zone so e so the e is known as ultimate point so the stress corresponding to that ultimate point is known as ultimate stress f u it is represented with f sub x u so the stress corresponding to the point c is known as yield stress f y and stress corresponding to the ultimate point is known as fu so after point if you observe upon increasing the strain the stress decreases so that is why this ef is known as strain softening zone or necking zone finally at point f the material breaks into two parts clear the material breaks into two parts this is about the stress strain curve of a mild steel so if you observe this stress strain curve of a mild steel after point c after point c it means after yielding so it is having strength clear or not so that is not the case for other materials 
Okay, so other materials will not have any strength after healing usually. But mild steel only, mild steel is an exceptional case where it is having strength after healing. So now these strengths is called as reserve strength. So reserve strength is a strength of a material beyond healing or after healing. So the possessing the strength after healing is a basis for plastic analysis. So plastic analysis is purely based on this concept. What is that concept? Having a strength beyond yielding state. Okay, that is a reserve strength. So now plastic analysis is based on that reserve strength. And we are going to idealize the stress strain curve for plastic analysis. How that idealization is. So let us see. So first take down this graph and understand this curve. See the basic purely plastic analysis is based upon this curve. Okay, stress strain curve. So take down this curve and from this how we have modified the stress strain curve for plastic analysis let us discuss clear as we discussed about this graph clear so this is the mild steel graph for sorry stress strain graph for mild steel now this graph is idealized in plastic analysis how this graph is idealized let us see in this graph as we discussed in detail about this graph clear so this is up to here proportional point, elastic point, upper real point, lower real point, and CD plastic zone or real plateau, and then DE strain hardening, and EF strain softening, and F is the necking point or failure point. E is the ultimate point. So as we discussed in then detail about this stress strain curve of mild steel, now this graph is going to be idealized in plastic analysis. How this is going to be idealized? Let us see. Again, same. On x-axis, we are going to represent strain and on y-axis, we are going to represent stress. We are going to analyze it by neglecting this upper yield point and strain softening, strain hardening zone. We are going to analyze the stress strain curve of mild steel in plastic analysis by ignoring upper yield point and strain hardening zone. So, if we neglect these two, so if we neglect upper real point so then graph will be up we have to consider the graph up to here after that it yields our plastic zone starts so and then we have neglected the strain hardening zone so then this is how the curve is going to be modified so the stress corresponding to this point is yield stress so this is the idealized stress strain curve for mild steel in plastic analysis Clear. So this is idealized stress strain curve. So this is idealized stress strain curve. So in plastic analysis, we are going to use this graph, not this. And one more thing, I am repeating: the main basis for the plastic analysis is the reserve strength of mild steel. Here, so if you observe this stress strain curve of mild steel, it is having strength beyond yield point. So now this strength forms the basis for plastic analysis. And the plastic analysis total design or the analysis depend upon this curve. So this curve we have to understand it clearly. So this is how the graph is obtained from this original graph. The graph what we are going to use in plastic analysis is obtained from the original graph. And if you observe that graph, the graph is bilinear. So this graph is bilinear. So bilinear means one straight line and another straight line. So two straight lines. Bilinear is nothing but two straight lines. That is a graph we are going to use in plastic analysis. Clear? So take down that graph. So we got the idealized graph from the original graph.